Hi, everyone. Dr. Elizabeth Bonet here. Dr. Liz, welcome to the Hypnotize Me podcast. Before we jump in, please note that the podcast is not mental health treatment, nor should it replace mental health treatment. If you need psychotherapy or hypnotherapy, please seek treatment from a trained professional. I do hypnosis all over the world, so please feel free to contact me through my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. Hi everyone, Dr. Liz here. So this is part two of a multi-part series about hypnosis for weight loss. And in this one, I interview Kelly Woods, who's a highly respected hypnotist. Her practice is in Washington and she presents in conferences. She does trainings and she also runs a really wonderful women in hypnosis Facebook group. And before we jump in, I want to thank two new reviewers that came in. One is Beach Mom times three who said, found this podcast to be extremely calming and insightful, delightfully soothing and beneficial. Thank you. So thank you to Beach Mom Times 3. And then the other one, the username is Time is on my side again. I love these usernames, like all the different usernames that pop up. But she said, Dr. Liz keeps me informed in so many ways. I look forward to each episode she offers. I'm always striving to learn and evolve. By listening to Dr. Liz, I've learned to tune into my body, intuition, and express the feelings that come to mind. She's funny, warm, informative, and personable. She's eager to learn from others and share her knowledge to others without wanting something in return. Thank you, Dr. Liz. Well, thank you so much. Time is on my side again. I really appreciate the new reviews, and they help keep the podcast easily foundable by other people. So in this interview with Kelly Woods, you're going to hear... Parts of my story, you can also listen to episode 149 to hear my story more in depth. And you're also going to find out like all different ways that we work with people for hypnosis for weight loss. And I think you'll find some usable tips that you can begin implementing now in your life. So let's jump in. Peace. Hi, Kelly. Welcome back to the Hypnotize Me podcast. Hi, Elizabeth. Happy to be here. I wanted to focus this time on weight loss, hypnosis for weight loss, because I know you do a lot of this work and it comes up in the group that you, your group online, your Facebook group that you administer quite a bit as well. And if you're listening to this and you're a hypnotherapist or a hypnotist, Kelly has an absolutely wonderful group for women hypnotists. And I I mean, it is really a miracle. Like, I don't think I've ever seen one quote unquote fight in there. Like you do in other groups, you know, or you you see online sometimes. And I don't know if that's because it's all women or what, I don't know, but it's really, I I think such a, a wonderful space you've created for people to bring questions and get feedback. Why do you think it is? Well, I think it's because I speak softly and carry a really big stick. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> like you're like an anti-stick person, maybe like a little fluffy dog. You speak softly and you carry a little fluffy dog. <laughs> like who could be? Who could... That's right. I, I'm grateful for our membership there. We have almost 3,000 women who work professionally in hypnosis. And there's such a high level of respect for each other that Really, it's an atmosphere that doesn't welcome um, untoward behavior. And so it's so supportive. And, you know, just the the unique nature of being a hypnotherapist means that we work kind of isolated. We do not, we usually have just, you know, private practices without coworkers or employees. And uh, we might even be the only hypnotist in town. And so, you know, years ago when I started this group, it, it was really to provide this forum for people to connect and feel supported by each other and share, uh, you know, perspectives and, and tools. And, and it's grown beautifully and kind of organically without even any promotion. And I love that. So it's a great resource. Yeah, it is. I told a, I had a coffee meeting with um, someone who just got certified in hypnosis and 
you know, she wanted to pick my brain some about it. And I told her about it. And I was like, you've got to join this group. This is an amazing group. (laughs) You know, so yeah, I think that is how it grows organically. Thank you. And it's fun too. There's something that happens when you get a bunch of women together. That is true. Yeah. I found it very helpful. I actually have two mentors and quite a bit of support in person, but there's still some things that some somebody will call you and or write you an email and I'm like, I have no idea, but let me search the group because I bet it's been talked about in there and sure enough it has and you get some resources for that. Yeah. Right. And so the topic of, of this of our conversation is um, hypnosis for weight loss. And yes. ironically, weight loss is one of the most common requests that we get. And yet there are practitioners that are not comfortable helping clients in that area. And some that even refer um, inquiries on to someone else that they just don't feel like they're um, effective in it. And I think that's because weight loss is so complex. There are so many different factors and influences that contribute to a person's weight. And that probably matches what the general public is feeling about trying to figure out how to lose weight themselves. There are so many mixed messages out there about certain ways of eating. And so, you know, while, unless, unless we're a nutritionist, it's not our job to prescribe any particular diet or non-diet to a client. Right. There's certainly many ways that we can use hypnosis to help them resolve that issue. Well, I would put myself in that category because for many years I wouldn't do it because I subscribe to the health at every size kind of movement where Mm -hmm. should we even be doing weight loss for people? Like when you really look at health, it often has very little to do with weight. Now, sometimes the weight is a sign of some unhealthy processes going on inside but sometimes it's not. So I had a whole thing for years of like, you know, I I won't do weight loss. I'll help you learn how to eat well. If you want to do that, if you want to change into healthy eating patterns, I'll help you with mindful eating, but just weight loss as a goal, I wouldn't do it. But through the, um, what would I say? Through the interaction of the group and then reading your book that you wrote about it, I've actually changed my mind about that. It's like, who am I to say, I won't help you with that? No, like that's your goal, right? <laughs> like if, and I think also I, I am going to say the health at every size movement misses a big emotional piece, which is a sort of a dichotomy because that is their whole thing. It's like you should really should quote unquote, right? Like learn to be happy at your size. And we live in a culture that doesn't support that. So how do we help you feel good about yourself at whatever size you're at? I think if I had to sum up their mission, that would be it. But if someone's coming saying, but I'm not happy at this size and I do live in this culture and, you know, I'm miserable and I'm working on this, but I would like to look a different way. My body shaped a different way then I think that's that's what they miss. And I think that we can be helpful as hypnotists and hypnotherapists. Oh, absolutely. And I'm and I'm sure you are too, a client-centered hypnotist. And so, you know, if they're going to come to me with a request, I want to honor that. And I think that getting out of our own way of, of what might be limiting beliefs is very important. It's important that we go there first and that we're able to challenge you know, thoughts and beliefs that might be restrictive to to us and to our growth. And so congratulations to you for expanding yeah, uh, your, you. your perspective on this topic. And, and I know, have even- to say that hypnosis was a part of that. So when I went through core healing a couple of years ago, the hypnotherapist, who's like an 82-year-old woman who designed this method, and I was there for um, something else, really. But a lot of it was about self-worth. And so she said, you know, what's going on here? And she really healed that part. And I felt like once my self-worth, like true self, self-value self and getting in touch with my purpose, which was to help as many people as I can heal while I'm here on this planet, then that made the shift for me into, okay, I think this is a limiting belief. And, and for me, it was a medical issue I had to resolve as well, being um, 
hypothyroid and working with my doctor and saying, I don't accept these practices that I just continually gain weight. Like there's something wrong here medically. The eating's under control. The self-worth is checked off, you know, but now I am committed to finding um, medically, like improving my health so that this happens because it, it really was a sign of the medical stuff for me. So you're making a really great point here is that there are many influences on a person. And yes. it's so important. It's so important to identify what it is because in your case, you had a medical issue that was influencing. I just recently worked with a woman who she had, didn't have a lot of, of excess weight on her body, but it was bothering her a lot. Mm -hmm. Her comfort levels were affected by it. And in her case, it was had some habitual eating patterns mm -hmm. that had fallen into place and she retired. And she had pretty good self-worth. She's got a great life. But these habits had become entrenched. Mm -hmm. And we hypnosis to affect those. In some cases, I have a client who has chronic pain, and that is affecting their weight. Absolutely. They're, they're eating in order to distract themselves from the pain, or the pain keeps them from being physically active. Although we know that exercise is not the um, conduit for weight loss. There's Great. many reasons to be physically active, but it, you know, largely it's a, a lot of beyond those medical problems that you mentioned. It's it's a lot of what we put into the body. So, um, considering all of the many different influences, whether it's quality of sleep, um, pain and, and comfort levels, mm -hmm. uh, stress levels, sometimes I'll get people um, calling me inquiring about um, weight loss, but they're not able to come in to see me right away. Maybe they're you know, um, on vacation or they're saving their money. And I'll just send them a hypnosis relaxation recording, an MP3 link. Mm -hmm. And by the time they show up, they've already lost weight just from listening to that record. Wow. So it's like a head start. <clears throat> it is. And when, when we can shift out of this chronic stress state that many people are operating in, then we move into a healing response and our body can do what it's designed to do. Which is natural. Yeah. Exactly. And that means then it's a, in a position to release that excess weight. Mm -hmm. That excess weight is often part of the stress response. It's there to insulate us. It's there to, you know, in case of the um, cold winter in the, in the shack syndrome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in our modern day and age, most people don't have to, to worry about that. But our biology is still hardwired for that. So when we're stressed, it shifts into that conservation mode. Absolutely. So simply, if people do nothing else but learn how to really relax, and hypnotic relaxation is different, as you know, from just sitting in front of the television, right? Oh, yeah. There's, there's something um, really magical that happens when you move into these hypnotic states. Yes, Yes. Now I have people say all the time, like, do you think I could just stay in that state? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like after we do hypnosis. It's like, well, no, actually you do have to live your life, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But we can teach them easy access to it. Yes. Yeah. Whenever I do hypnosis, actually, it's there's always a suggestion that you can access this state whenever you like or need to. Right. And, you know, when we think about the idea that, okay, it's probably a good idea to eat small amounts of healthy food to, to keep your energy levels consistent so you don't get those highs and lows uh, throughout the day. Well, the same thing goes for addressing tension levels. Mm -hmm. If we can reboot ourselves and move ourselves out of that stress state every now and then during the day, we're, we're going to end up at the end of the day feeling good instead of having that high level of stress or fatigue that drives a person to inappropriate eating. Because yes. so many people tell me they do find during the day. So when they get home, it's the evening, mm -hmm. the eating and the grazing commences. And right. there are several reasons for that. One is to try to get out of that stress state. Another is that the distractions of the day are gone and they're there with their thoughts or maybe they're feeling restless or bored or whatever the other um, emotional needs that are going on mm -hmm. and still taught themselves. And, you know, we learn that early on in life 
how to find comfort with food. Yes, it's one of the, right. It's, it's one of those programs that gets downloaded, and we often use the metaphor of a computer for our mind, where those programs get downloaded in the first decade of life, and we're relating food and sugar in particular to positive um, experiences and people and feelings. You know, mm-hmm. Christmas, Halloween's, Halloween, one of my favorite holidays, and mm-hmm. birthday cake, grandma's baking, and all that, all that good stuff associates sugar with all those positive things in life and that program gets downloaded and kind of runs in default mm-hmm. now for some some people it gets updated i had cavities as a young person and that did it for me sugar is not my nemesis for many people it stays just running there and i've had people in their 60s 70s 80s come in elizabeth and they're still eating sugar like they're freaking five years old and they seem to just have no control over it. So it's yeah, well, I think too, there's, you know, it's not just them. And I don't, I don't think it's just those programs, but it's, we're exposed to so much. Um, what one of my, I would say colleagues calls big food instead of big pharma, right? Big food. Yes. <laughs> so yes. they, they spend millions, I would even say probably trillions if you're looking over decades of money on saying how do we get people to eat food that's not healthy for them basically so that we can make money right yes because and it's those influence influences too so it's like all right how, how do we address that as well sometimes it is emotional sometimes it's um programs downloaded initially some of some of that is by logic right like Yes, to survive when we come out as right. Babies, right? Well, <laughs> well, we're can... we're designed to like to like the taste of sweetness, so that we we'll leave the fruit off of the trees. We are, um, yeah. And you're right. Big food has spends a lot of money creating and promoting highly palatable foods. Yeah, you, know, you notice you don't see a lot of advertisements for broccoli, but we, you'll see you'll you don't see, see it advertisements for, for even like fasting because they don't make anything on that, right? <laughs> Like really, it was funny. I didn't have cable for um, over ten years. I, I was like an early cord cutter, and so I never saw commercials. Like unless I was at the gym, and occasionally I'd see a commercial. But I wasn't at the gym that often, to be honest. Okay, so so I got married last year, and my husband's a huge football fan. I love football too. Sports is one of the things I missed from cable. So I said, okay, we'll get cable. And I can't even, I cannot even believe the commercials running around food. And I was just like, this is insane. Food and pharmaceuticals, right? Drugs. Exactly. Right. Like, and this and is we nuts. know, we know the hypnotic power of television. Yes. Hollywood has a term called suspending disbelief. Yes. Because when we're engaged in watching television, whether it's a great football game or a good movie, we're immersed in it. We don't even hear the background noise in our home. And then bam, here comes the commercial and that drops right into our belief system. And people start to believe that McDonald's really sells food. Right. So, well, what's interesting is since I wasn't used to it, it was like the commercial would come and it was right there. Like my husband doesn't even notice the commercials. For me, yes. it was like, okay, those have to be muted. And if really, I don't even want the images. Like you've got to turn that off, you know, <laughs> like I don't want this at all. It's currently muted at the minimum, right? Well, and I think really we're talking about awareness. Once a person has awareness, they can start to see these things happening yes. and then they can start to protect themselves. You know, I often talk about our subconscious mind as being the great eavesdropper. It is listening, but it doesn't have the power of the conscious mind to discern whether what it's hearing is true or good for us. It just takes it in. Mm-hmm. And of course, that, that feed into it comes from all many sources, from a television commercials. It comes from uh, the things we read, the people yes. we're around, especially yes. people who have influenced our peers. Uh, you know, we live in a very commercialized society. There's marketing around us constantly. Yes. But the biggest source of that feed is our own thoughts. And yes. this is why it's so important for me to teach my clients how to regulate those thoughts so that they will be helpful. And just yesterday, I worked with a woman who who came for, she's working with me for weight loss. 
and she's berating herself. She says, I tell myself not to think about the cake. And I said, well, okay, don't think of a purple elephant. And she stared at me, <laughs> right. and, and she got it. In that moment, she got it. So helping a person restructure how they're thinking about things yes, and, and the messages that they're giving to themselves, realizing that they're actually sustaining thoughts, um, negative self-talk. Yes. With mm -hmm. knowing that they're doing it. And so we need to to help them think more helpful thoughts. And it doesn't necessarily mean positive thinking, especially for people who are stuck in depression or mm -hmm. you know, that can actually do the opposite because they can't sustain that. But to develop a positive mindset, to notice the things in life that are helpful. For example, someone walking through the grocery store can actually notice the foods that are helpful for them for weight loss. Yes. While, while knowing what is safe to ignore. I install negative hallucinations in my weight loss clients all the time. Mm -hmm. And they laugh when they realize that they forgot to even notice some of the junk food that they used to buy. Mm, beautiful. And losing weight should be easy. It should be easy. And I think when we create these kinds of systems within a person's mind with them, it's not a matter of us doing something to them. This is a cooperative process. It becomes easy. They notice that they got full before they ate all the food. Mm -hmm. And and it's just an uncanny feeling. And sometimes it happens below their conscious awareness. I remember a woman who came in for her second weight loss session with me, and she was mad. She practically stomped her foot. She said, Kelly, this is not working. Mm. And I said, well, tell me how your week went. Have a seat. And she said, well, on Thursday, I went to that damn fast food place which clearly wasn't on our plan. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what, what, ha what happened there? And she said, well, I ordered this turkey sandwich. It tasted like cardboard and I couldn't even eat it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> exactly. And after you know a long pause, she started laughing hysterically too. Until that moment, she had, didn't have a conscious awareness that of course it, her subconscious mind was helping her, just not in the way that she thought it would. And this happens all of the time. Yes. Sure we've had, had situations with your clients where they have these kinds of surprise epiphanies or awarenesses that something that they didn't even expect, but that is very helpful to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or they'll think this isn't working, but then weeks later, we'll come back and say, okay, actually, I've got to admit that it is, right? Like it just took some time, that's it, to change yes. those neural pathways, yeah. to make those new patterns happen, to have that begin to work on the mind. And, we're, and really what we're doing, especially with these positive suggestions that are geared with a, a client's interest in mind, is we're updating that part of their mind, telling it what they really want now. Yes. And, and it'll process and digest, and then it'll start to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing. It, it seems kind of magical, but it is a process. And and that's why, especially if someone has you know, a significant amount of weight to release, it can take a while. I have a client I've been working with for over a year, and we had those first six initial sessions fairly close together. And now um, she comes once a month, and she has released 150 pounds. Wow. And, uh, yes, I can't tell you what a difference it has made in this person and in her life. And yes. she's of herself and I am so proud of her. Basically, it's like we're some kind of emancipator for people. We free them from those uh, limiting beliefs and the things that have kept them stuck. Absolutely. And yes. And just search forward. Yes. So do you find typically it takes longer than what most people are expecting? I think sometimes, although really anyone who has been uh, struggling, especially with obesity, for a long time understands that it requires a lifestyle change, but they've usually been trying things like diets and diets don't work because mm -hmm. they set up deprivation right? and they're not sustainable. And so. Yeah. Um, like the research is so clear to, no, no, to nutrition, but the like calories in calories out does not work and deprivation doesn't work. And it's got to be something that you can sustain over the lifetime that feels good. Right, and it doesn't feel like torture. Right, to nourish yourself, really. Is that makes them feel, feel good. And I think one of the 
one of the strengths of hypnosis is that it can help a person feel good from the get-go. And when people feel better, they heal better. They take better care of themselves. And many people are stuck in the mentality that once I lose this weight, I'll be happy. Well, we help them be happy now. Yes. So it makes it easy. So it makes it easier to take good care of themselves and to value and respect their body, which is the vehicle of their life. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, I have had some clients come in and, and have some instantaneous switches, particularly if it's just one or two things that they're doing that is really um, keeping that weight on their body. I had a truck driver come to me, big, enormous man, and he wanted some help. He was finally ready to, to change his weight. And when he's describing his habits, he told me that he had removed the passenger seat in his semi and he had installed this big cooler. And inside the cooler was all of his soda pop and candy bars and chips. Mm-hmm. And so during his, his, his shift, he would just delve into that and feed his face. Mm-hmm. And of course, the result was he was uh, 350 pounds. Um, he, you know, it was old enough that it was starting to impact his health and, yeah. and he was concerned. So he was pretty motivated. And, you know, I had one session with him. And that man went and he got rid of that cooler and he uh, reinstalled the, the seat and just put a smaller cooler that was filled with healthy food. Yeah, I was going to say, like that cooler yeah. could be filled with salad and like fruits you know, and veggies. And, you know, exactly. And, I don't know. And, and his weight just dramatically started to leave his body. And he would send me weekly updates with pictures of himself and his scale. And it was oh, just a joy. You know? yes. Yeah. So, I only saw the man once. And yet we have this great ongoing relationship as he's almost at his goal weight now. He even sends me pictures of his puppies. And, you know, (laughs) the therapeutic relationship is a powerful thing. And I would encourage um, your listeners, if they have tried hypnotherapy and found that it didn't work for them, try another hypnotist. Because when you find the right connection, a person who you click with, that's really where a lot of magic can happen. Too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I fully believe that 50 years of research really supports that, that it really is about the fit between the client and the therapist, whatever type of therapist that is, whether it's hypnosis or massage or acupuncture or, or um, physical therapy. Yeah. Because relationships are important. They really are. So I think that's great advice. I had someone call me and this was when I, I didn't really do hypnosis for weight loss. And I told her that and she's like, well, it only took one session last time. That's all I want. You can't just do one session with me. And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't do it, you know. But for some people it is. It's just one session. That's all they need. She knew that's what was effective for her last time. So that's what she was looking for. But obviously she had to find someone who wanted to do that, Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and that is that is for some people. And then other people, it is longer-term work. Yeah, and I think that it's important for people to realize that experiencing hypnosis is a bit of a skill set. Mm-hmm. Most people can experience it. And for some people, especially if they have any kind of background of meditation, it's very easy for them to kind of let go. Some people, it takes a couple of sessions. And that's one of the reasons why we provide recordings for them to listen to in between our sessions so that it will further and train their brain to be able to just relax and let go. Yes. And I have clients that come in and really they're not nervous about experiencing hypnosis because they're afraid. They're worried that they're maybe not going to be able to do it. And when I reassure them that there's nothing you have to do, Mm -hmm. wow, that's a relief. And for especially people who are that, you know, productivity driven, that's kind of a, a new paradigm, right? Absolutely. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I just yeah. back and close my eyes. Wow, this is pretty cool. Yes, absolutely it is. I get the same type of fear come up with people and generally there's um, there's great relief afterwards. They love it. And there's relief that, no, you don't have to do anything. Or there's also relief that it's okay for your conscious mind to keep going. Like just because yeah. you're hearing every word doesn't mean this isn't effective. Like your subconscious, like we were talking about earlier, is listening. It listens to some of the negative stuff, absolutely. And we're rewriting that so that you can ignore that negative stuff. But it's listening now, too. 
That's whether right. you're in a fully aware state or whether you're in a deeper state of hypnosis, a deeper brainwave state, that alpha, theta, even delta occasionally, or when someone falls asleep. Absolutely. Yeah. So it is a, a fascinating process. I had that same question myself one time when early on in hypnosis. It was like my conscious mind would just keep going. And I had a absolutely beautiful hypnotherapist that said to me, well, let's honor it. Of course it's going. It helps you integrate everything that's happening. And this that's is something right. really important to integrate for you. So it was just this like, ah, and clients really appreciate that. The more analytical ones, right? Productive oriented, yes. let's get this done. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's actually what, how my brain operates. And when I, when I first started studying hypnosis, I really appreciated the science behind it, the structure. Yes. And then over, over time, the art of it yes. started to entice me more and more. And my creative side started really sharing the responsibility of my work with my clients. And, and I value that so much, my creative side. And, you know, to be able to use metaphor and story and to be able to utilize even just the smallest little um, salient points that a client offers is so important. Yes, I agree. And it is a, a lovely part of being a hypnotherapist is taking that conscious part of the session where you're talking and you're checking in and you're saying, okay, what do you want to focus on or what's important to you this week or any of that? And then putting that into a hypnosis on the fly, right? Like, like we have our starters, you know, there's certain things we do to put you into relaxation and that type of thing. But then like the suggestions are they're powerful and they're if, powerful, and if have, they're driven by the client they are we need that fodder from them that resonates with them and you know one of the things I'll, that i'll often ask clients for is something that they're really good at mm -hmm. something that they they feel confident about that they're competent at and then we want to map across from that to their choices about food so that they can make intelligent choices about food and have that same level of competence and confidence that they had in that other thing. And we can even anchor that in somewhere in their body or use a power word for it, for example, um, or a, a physical gesture so that they can activate that so that any time when they think that they might be needing to eat for sustenance, then they can activate that kind of level of competence. Yes. And it works like magic. And it really is a resource state that helps them make the right decisions for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. That's wonderful. I think it's so important too, because like struggles with food are often hidden. So people will be very competent in the rest of their life and then come in and say, I eat in secret or, you know, nobody knows how I feel about this. Like I pretend otherwise, or I hear this all the time, right? Where it's like, okay, let's access, let's help you access that competent state that the things you're doing great in your life so that you can apply that to food. So you don't have to have this hidden part of your life anymore. Yeah. And I think what people who, who struggle with food issues and who spend a lot of time thinking about food, which is common, mm -hmm. um, they need to understand that that's just something their quirky mind decided to focus on because it could be, smoking it could be drugs it could be alcohol it could be gambling it could be shopping it could be sex True. <laughs> right. you know? and and who knows sometimes we have some um predisposition towards one of these things but sometimes it's totally meaningless why our mind decided to attach and obsess on this particular thing and to use this as some attempt to satisfy some emotional need and we know that there is no food, there's no drink, there's no jackpot, there's no right. cigarette, there's no orgasm that could possibly satisfy an emotional need. Correct. It might give temporary distraction, but then those feelings come back again. They need to be addressed. And, you know, Cal Banyan calls our emotions our inner senses. And I love that, mm -hmm. that definition because they're no different than our outer senses. They're there signaling us, giving us important information. And so we need to learn to respond to those in an appropriate 
and effective way. And just reaching out for food is really not doing that. So yes. I'm, te- I'm teaching emotional intelligence to our clients and helping them come up with alternative ways that they can satisfy those emotions is key to having success for them. Yes. And to soothe, to self-soothe, because really when you're talking about addiction, whether it is food or sex or gambling or alcohol, it's generally a tool they're using to soothe themselves in some way. So it's like, okay, figure out how to soothe yourself without an addiction, without a substance going along with that or something that's a healthy way to you remind me of one client I was asking, her, you know, how else could you answer that and give yourself that comfort? And she said, well, I could suck my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, you could do that. My, you know, over time cause some issues with your teeth, but True. you could do that. Or, or what else could you do? <laughs> you know, our, our clients are so funny. One of the best, best experiences I had, and this is going to sound wacko that I describe it that way was a, a man I'd been working with for weight loss and he came into my office and I had a little, a little lobby area there and I greeted him there and this was probably, oh, maybe a month into our work together and I hadn't seen him for a little while and, and he stood in front of me and he said, it's working and then his pants dropped to his ankles. <laughs> this is hysterical. Luckily, he was wearing shorts. I was going to say, oh, yeah. he had at least boxers, boxers on. Boxer shorts. They're burned into my <laughs> into my brain right now. And, but he was so pleased to show how Aww, he had, you know, that's sweet. his pants had outgrown him. Yeah. And, of course, I laughed and congratulated him. But, Absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's wonderful to share the joys of, of our clients' success and, and to be on that journey with them as they – as they move into new chapters of their life. And, yes. And, you know, there's just not much better in life. Well, it has been a delightful conversation. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast again to talk about this. Can you please tell people how to find you? And I know your book is written more for professionals working in this field, but if someone wanted to check out your book or they're listening to the podcast and they're a professional, could you please also tell them how to find your book? Sure. They can actually find it all at woodshypnosis.com. I have a page there that has all my books and they're available on Amazon too. So, but that's probably the easiest, quickest link is to go there. Okay. Wonderful. And that will be in the show notes. It's woods, W-O-O-D-S, hypnosis.com. And again, thank you for being here. Thank you, Elizabeth. I enjoyed our time together. I just want to say a little something here before the thinking music comes on, which is what I usually play after an interview. I absolutely loved this conversation with Kelly and her book was one of the things that helped change my mind about working in this area, as well as my own experience. And I talk about that on another episode of the podcast. But if you want to head start on helping yourself, then I sell two downloads. I've been selling for years, actually. They're very popular. One is Love to Exercise, and the other one is Healthy and Mindful Eating. So it helps you really take control of those eating patterns and develop healthier ones and more mindful ones so that you're not overeating, so that you're eating to fullness and then you're stopping. And the Loving to Exercise one was based on interviewing people who love to exercise. I'm not one of those people, okay? (laughs) But I was like, all right, how about I interview people who do and see what they're doing and see what's helpful for them and how do they think? So it was developed from that mindset. One of those people is my neighbor who's a lifetime Marine and the girl is, is fit. She loves to exercise It really is, um, I think, like an endorphin release for her. I mean, her job is dependent on her staying fit, too. I'm sure that's a big motivator, right? But I'm sure you have your own motivators. Health is one of them. Our kids is one of them. Our stress relief, perhaps. So anyway, that hypnosis is fantastic. People love it. I listen to it. And since I've been listening to that one, I really do look forward to exercising more. Like, I start to crave it, which was a new experience after I wrote that hypnosis and had to work on my own mind. So both of those can be found over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com slash 
downloads, if you just go to the main menu or right under shop, it'll take you to the downloads page and you can purchase those. And there's a discount code, of course, for my podcast listeners, because I love you all. So the discount code is HEALTHY, H-E-A-L-T-H-Y, and that's in the show notes. And you can put that in at any time and get 10% off that download. So those can help give you a head start. And then if you do want to work with someone, either find someone in your area or I do do hypnosis all over the world as well, as does Kelly. She does Zoom sessions, which are secure and works with people all over the place. So feel free to contact either one of us. All right, people, have a wonderful week. Peace. hope you truly enjoyed today's episode. Remember that you can get free hypnosis downloads over at my website, drlizhypnosis.com, D-R-L-I-Z hypnosis.com. I work all over the world doing hypnosis. So if you're interested in working with me, please schedule a free consultation over at my website and we'll see what your goals are and if I can be of service to you in helping you reach them. Finally, if you liked today's episode, please subscribe to the podcast or tell a friend. That way, more and more people learn about the power of hypnosis. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful week. Peace.